Panama Canal is also suffering from major disruption as many fewer ships are now getting through. The low water levels at the Panama Canal are actually causing a traffic jam in one of the largest trading routes in the world right now. Is this the world's most expensive traffic jam? Ships lined up for days outside the Panama Canal last August. The United States recently closed the Panama Canal for regular repair, as is customary. Nonetheless, several specialists worry that this might indicate more serious underlying problems. The possibility of a rival canal in Nicaragua is drawing notice, which increases the uncertainty. Might this mark the start of the Panama Canal's demise? What could these changes signify for international trade? Let's examine the possible difficulties that lie ahead. A magnificent milestone in the history of world trade and engineering, the building of the Panama Canal changed ship traffic across the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, both of which were situated in the southernmost point of South America. Ships had to negotiate the dangerous seas of the Drake Passage and the Strait of Magellan before the canal's building. This was a dangerous trip, with hazards including strong winds, lethal currents, and the difficult Antarctic climate. These elements made the passage dangerous, demanding, and protracted, understanding they needed a better and safer path. Spanish explorers in the 16th century started to dream of a project that would permanently alter marine navigation, the Panama Canal. This ambitious concept suggested crossing the little landmass linking North and South America, therefore enabling ships to pass between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans in a fraction of the time it would have taken in the past. The idea promised to save days, if not weeks, of travel as well as to significantly lower the hazards involved in the long journey around South America's southern point. The awareness of how much simpler it would be to cross the oceans with such a shortcut led to the proposal of building a canal across Panama. Though other possible canal sites were under consideration, Panama finally became the choice. In the 1850s, the United States had already built a railroad across Panama's isthmus, following the course the canal would subsequently travel somewhat precisely since it proved the viability of crossing the isthmus and offered a logistical foundation for the building of the canal. This early infrastructure was crucial in the choice to build it in Panama. Still, building the canal was a massive and difficult task. Under Ferdinand de Lesseps, a French corporation known as La Compagnie Universelle du Canal Interoceanique, started the first major effort at building the Panama Canal. De Lesseps was the revered engineer behind Egypt's successful Suez Canal construction a project finished with amazing simplicity that had earned him an international hero. Inspired by past performance, de Lesseps felt he could finish the Panama Canal fast and effectively. Like the Suez, he envisaged a sea-level canal whereby ships might flow straight from one ocean to the other without locks. De Lesseps mostly persuaded common people to invest in the project, therefore enabling a significant sum of money for its implementation. Still, not everyone approved of his scheme. Surveying Panama's topography, another well-known engineer, Adolphe Godin de Lépinay, concluded that a sea-level canal was unworkable. After considering the topography of the area, Lépinay suggested a different design he felt would be more appropriate for Panama's difficult circumstances. His scheme called for damming the Rio Grande, which went into the Pacific, and the Chagres River, which flowed into the Atlantic Ocean, therefore generating a sequence of large artificial lakes. Channels sliced over the mountains would link these lakes, and locks would raise and lower ships between the several water levels. Although many professionals found Lepinay's idea appealing, the French business finally turned it down in favor of de la Sepp's original sea-level design. Unfortunately, this choice would turn out to be a major error. De la Sepp's had underpaid for the challenges of building a canal in Panama, a territory quite unlike Egypt. Panama was a hot, humid, disease-ridden rainforest while the Suez Canal was developed in a desert. The ground was mountainous and rocky, with heavy rain and lots of flora. Furthermore, unfit for the difficult terrain of Panama was the French machinery, meant for the flat, arid surroundings of the Suez Canal. The project ran against many challenges as the building went on. Many of the French workers and engineers contracted tropical diseases including malaria and yellow fever since they were not ready for the difficult conditions. Spreading via mosquitoes, these diseases killed thousands of lives and seriously reduced the workforce. Eventually, to save money, the French business dropped the notion of a sea-level canal and embraced a lock-based design akin to Lepinay's initial suggestion. 
but by now the initiative was clearly in major crisis. Notwithstanding these corrections, the French attempts to construct the canal kept failing. Financial problems dogged the project, and popular support in France started to fade as it grew more evident that it would not be finished within budget or on schedule. Following multiple futile attempts at revival of the project, the corporation filed for bankruptcy in 1889. A second attempt at resuming building in 1894 similarly failed. By 1898, the French had completely given up. Though it would not be the end of the canal itself, the failure of the French effort signaled the end of their ambition of creating the Panama Canal. Although the French setback appeared to mark the end of the Panama Canal project, the United States immediately brought fresh life to the initiative on a worldwide scene. The Spooner Act, which let the U.S. buy the assets of the French company, including its machinery and rights to keep building, was passed by Congress in 1902. But before the U.S. could go further, it had to negotiate with Colombia, still ruling Panama at the time. Difficult negotiations between the United States and Colombia finally collapsed, resulting in a startling change of events. Seeing a chance, Panama broke away from Colombia in 1903 under American support. Quickly signing the Hey Bunau Varilla Treaty with the United States, this newly independent country gave the U.S. rights to build and perpetually occupy the 10-mile-wide Panama Canal Zone along the projected path. After political and logistical issues were settled, the United States started what would turn out to be one of the most ambitious engineering projects in history, building the Panama Canal. Building the canal from the American perspective was somewhat different from the French one. Drawing lessons from the French mistakes, the Americans embraced Le Pinay's initial concept for a lock-based canal. This idea included building large locks between several water levels that would raise and lower ships so they could pass over the difficult terrain and across the isthmus, along with putting great effort into stopping the spread of diseases like malaria and yellow fever. The Americans concentrated on enhancing the health and safety of the employees. Among these initiatives were better medical treatment for the employees, cleaning of standing water where mosquitoes proliferated, and drainage of such areas. The building of the Gatun locks was among the most important technical successes of the project. Modern engineering marvels these locks, which raised ships 85 feet above sea level to Gatun Lake, an artificial lake built by damming the Chagres River. Covering 164 square miles, the lake itself became a vital part of the canal since it let ships pass across the steep terrain before going down a set of further locks to reach the Pacific Ocean. Building these locks called for creative ideas including the utilization of big concrete chambers and sophisticated mechanical systems to regulate ship movement and water flow. Officially opening on August 15, 1914, the Panama Canal represents a turning point in world marine history. Ships could now pass between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans in a tenth of the time they had once required, therefore transforming global commerce routes. During World War II, the canal's strategic value became even more clear-cut, since it was a vital link for military and supply ships, enabling the United States to quickly transfer supplies and troops between the two oceans. The building of the Panama Canal had great geopolitical ramifications in addition to being an architectural victory showing the United States' capacity to undertake and finish large-scale worldwide infrastructure projects, the canal came to represent American creativity and might. With the canal zone essentially under U.S.-controlled territory for much of the 20th century, it also solidified the United States' impact in Latin America. The Panama Canal remained indispensable for world trade in the years after it was finished. Still, the way the canal was run remained a source of conflict between Panama and the U.S. Following years of discussions, the torrijos carter Treaties were signed in 1977, laying the groundwork for the final handover of canal authority from the United States into Panama. Completing almost a century of American control, this transfer signaled a new chapter in the history of the canal on December 31, 1999. Supported by the United States, Panama's declaration of its independence from Colombia in November 1903 marked a major threat to Colombia's authority over the territory. Driven by Panama's ambition to seize control of its destiny, this audacious action was strategically supported by the United States, seeing a great chance to help the Panama Canal to be built. Negotiations between the United States and the recently established Panamanian government moved quickly after Panama declared its independence. 
signed under the Spooner Act, the Hay Bunau Varilla Treaty came about in February 1904. Establishing the Panama Canal Zone, this treaty gave the United States control over the canal and its environs, therefore enabling one of the most audacious engineering undertakings ever undertaken. To guarantee the sustainability of the canal, the United States soon understood it needed to solve the different sea levels on either side of the isthmus. Drawing on the French experience, which had failed mostly because of the geography's difficulties and the choice to create a sea level canal, the United States chose a lock based design. Summer 1904 saw a building start, and it soon became evident that the work ahead would be more challenging than anyone had projected. The Chagres River, a strong watercourse running from northern Panama's mountains into the Atlantic Ocean, presented one of the first significant obstacles. Particularly when the canal is being built along the river's banks, the water levels of the river vary greatly with rainfall, thereby posing a major risk of uncontrollable flooding. There was always a chance for disaster, hence river management became a major focus of the building of the canal. A strong supporter of the canal, President Theodore Roosevelt stood firmly in 1906 behind Chief Engineer John Frank Stevens' lock-based canal proposal. Inspired by an earlier French design, this one had notable enhancements to meet the special difficulties of the Panamanian terrain. The building of Gatun Lake, then the biggest man-made lake in the world, was a major component of this strategy. Building a large dam at Gatun to regulate the Chagres River's flow and offer a vital section of the 50-mile path for the canal helped create the lake. One of the biggest technical projects of its day, the building of the Panama Canal, employed more than 40,000 people at its height. Though most of the workforce originated from the West Indies, engineers, managers, and skilled workers were mostly from the United States. To shape the canal across some of the most difficult terrain on Earth, these laborers worked under demanding conditions, often in temperatures above 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Constructed in honor of American architect David Dubois Gaillard, who supervised its development until his tragic death, the Culebra Cut, later dubbed the Gaillard Cut, was among the most challenging parts of the canal to build. The nine-mile-long cut needed to be passed across the Continental Divide by excavating enormous volumes of rock and soil, which called for frequent mudslides and landslides brought on by the unstable rock and soil in the Culebra Cut caused not only great risk, but also notable delays. One very noteworthy event was the continuous landslide at Cucaracha in 1907, which sent millions of cubic yards of dirt into the cut and seriously hampered progress. Still, the engineers and laborers persisted in facing these difficulties. Their incredible 73 million cubic meter removal using steam shovels, dynamite, and rock drills finally reduced the excavation floor to within 40 feet of sea level. The effort was on a vast scale, and the successes were enormous. Following a 10-year of unrelenting work and many challenges, the Panama Canal was formally opened for trade by August 15, 1914. Understanding how the Panama Canal works can help one to appreciate its importance. The Panama Canal must negotiate the varied heights of the Panamanian terrain unlike conventional canals, which are frequently at a single elevation. A sequence of locks, acting as water elevators, lifts and lowers ships as they pass the canal. The canal's role in maintaining the United States' ability to respond to possible threats in the Asia-Pacific area demonstrates its long-standing importance in global geopolitics. While the Panama Canal's strategic and economic importance cannot be overstated, it is facing increasing challenges from environmental forces outside its management's control. The canal's unique lock system, which allows ships to be raised and lowered between different water levels, requires a huge volume of fresh water. This water comes from reservoirs like Lake Gatun and Lake Alajuela, which are replenished by rain throughout Panama's rainy season. Unlike many other canals that run at sea level and do not require fresh water to function, the Panama Canal is fully reliant on a continuous and stable supply of fresh water. Historically, Panama's wet season, which lasts from April to November, delivered enough rainfall to keep reservoirs full and the canal running smoothly. However, rainfall has decreased significantly in recent years, especially during the key months of the wet season. Climate change has changed conventional weather patterns and made rainfall more unpredictable, contributing to this reduction. El Nino, which modifies wind and ocean current patterns in the Pacific Ocean, has significantly reduced rainfall in Panama. El Nino episodes cause warmer than normal sea surface temperatures in the Pacific Ocean, 
potentially leading to drought conditions in Central and South America, including Panama. The effects of these environmental changes on the Panama Canal have been severe. The drought that began in 2023 has been considered the worst in decades, with reservoir levels reaching dangerously low levels. Because of the low water levels, the Panama Canal Authority has implemented water-saving measures such as limiting the number of transits per day and putting draft restrictions on ships, which lower the quantity of cargo they can transport. These measures, while important to save water, have reduced the canal's efficiency and capacity and the canal's ability to function. Numerous ideas, such as rerouting rivers to augment the canal's water supply, have been put forth in an attempt to address the problem of water scarcity. However, there are many drawbacks to these options, such as possible negative social and environmental effects. The lives and cultural practices of the indigenous groups who live along these waterways can be greatly impacted by changes in river flows, which can also upset established ecosystems. The necessity for a consistent water supply must therefore be carefully weighed against any potential negative social or environmental effects in any action made to alleviate the water shortage. Though it is no longer under U.S. ownership, the canal is nonetheless vital to U.S. strategic objectives. The Panama Canal makes it possible for U.S. warships stationed on the East Coast to reach the Pacific 18 days faster than they could by circumnavigating South America which might be a critical advantage in the case of a conflict with China. The Panamanian government considers the canal to be its most valuable asset, as it serves both military and commercial purposes on a worldwide scale. Panama would suffer large financial losses if the canal dried up. Let's talk about the canal's water crisis now. An incredible 52 million gallons of water are needed for each passing of the Panama Canal. Rainfall maintains the levels of man-made lakes namely Gatun Lake, from which ships are raised and lowered through a range of water levels. But the majority of rainwater eventually finds its way back to the ocean, creating a special problem. It is challenging to strike a balance between the canal's needs and those of the 4.3 million people who live in Panama, because they all rely on the same water sources for drinking water. Along the canal and surrounding lakes, there has usually been an abundance of rainfall as Panama has historically been one of the wettest countries on Earth. But 2023 was a big year for declines, especially in Gatun Lake. This decrease was mostly caused by two factors, the El Nino weather phenomena and a general decline in precipitation. Warmer ocean temperatures during an El Nino cause disruptions in air circulation patterns, which in turn reduce or divert the winds that normally deliver significant rainfall to Panama and other tropical locations. In the center and east-central Pacific Ocean, El Niño is a cyclical oceanic and climatic event that happens every two to seven years. The typical trade winds that move warm water from the Americas toward the western Pacific from east to west start to decrease during an El Niño period. This change stops deeper, colder waters from rising and forces warm water back towards the west coast of the Americas. The ordinary atmospheric circulation patterns are upset by this big area of warm water which weakens or fails the winds that normally bring rain to Panama. El Nino was especially bad in 2023. October 2023 saw the lowest amount of rainfall in Panama since records have been kept, at 41% less than the historical norm. Since October is typically Panama's wettest month, this deficit had a big effect. As per the government, 2023 was the second lowest rainfall year in Panama's history making it one of the most disappointing rainy seasons overall. El Nino occurrences typically last 9 to 12 months, but other El Nino occurrences have lasted longer, sometimes even for several years, as the consequences of climate change deepen. There is currently a 60% probability that the current El Nino will last longer than usual, which could cause problems for Panama's upcoming rainy season. If this occurs, Panama's lakes will be unable to refill, which will result in a continuous water deficit for the Panama Canal and create serious obstacles for both domestic and international trade. But what is this issue's underlying cause? El Nino is one of the main causes, but it's not the whole story. The water shortage in the Panama Canal is mostly caused by deforestation, especially in the Amazon rainforest. Through a process called transpiration, the Amazon rainforest, which is hundreds of kilometers away, significantly affects the water levels in the canal. 
huge volumes of water vapor are released into the atmosphere by the lush rainforest, where they condense to form clouds and ultimately return as rain, creating a self-sustaining cycle. Because of its vital function in controlling regional rainfall patterns and affecting the global climate, the Amazon is sometimes referred to as the planet's air conditioning system. Deforestation, however, throws this delicate cycle off balance. The overall amount of rainfall is decreased when trees are chopped down because they are unable to emit water vapor into the atmosphere. The rainforest runs the risk of collapsing due to deforestation when it reaches a tipping point where it can no longer provide enough rain to survive. This concerning pattern starts a risky domino effect. Deforestation weakens the Amazon rainforest, causing it to release more carbon dioxide and absorb less rainfall. This further reduces the rainforest's ability to produce rain by making the remaining trees more susceptible to dying from a lack of moisture. The weakening of the rainforest makes it more vulnerable to protracted and severe droughts, such as the one that is presently plaguing Panama. Furthermore, data indicates that some regions of the Amazon are currently emitting more carbon dioxide than they are absorbing. Regions like Panama that depend on consistent rainfall patterns are put in even greater danger as a result of this vicious cycle of deforestation, decreased rainfall, and higher carbon emissions, which intensify the climate problem. There has never been a clearer picture of how interdependent all the systems in the world are. The Panama Canal water problem serves as a sobering reminder of the far-reaching effects that environmental changes in one region of the world can have on another. El Niño's declining rainfall in Panama and the compounded consequences of deforestation in the Amazon demonstrate the delicate balance needed to sustain our planet's ecosystems. The operation of the Panama Canal is seriously threatened by the growing probability of longer-lasting and more severe droughts brought on by the weakening of the Amazon rainforest. These environmental trends could pose serious operating issues for the canal, which is an essential conduit for global trade. Considering how important the canal is to Panama's economy, the financial ramifications are dire. The global trade network would also be negatively impacted, with longer transit times and higher transportation costs impacting the availability and costs of goods globally. It is crucial to address the underlying causes of the water problem to reduce these hazards. It is imperative to take action against climate change, lessen deforestation, and adopt sustainable water management techniques. Preserving the Amazon rainforest in particular is essential for sustaining its function in regulating global climate as well as regional rainfall patterns. The repercussions of the drying Panama Canal reach far beyond the acute water shortage, affecting regional climates and worldwide transportation. The underlying issue of deforestation in the Amazon has far-reaching implications, altering local and regional rain cycles and resulting in drier conditions hundreds of miles from the rainforest. This underlines a serious problem for Panama, where the decreasing canal is having substantial repercussions. The Panama Canal Authority, responsible for regulating the canal's operations, has been pushed to make difficult decisions in reaction to the severe water scarcity. As a result, they have put severe limits on the number of ships authorized to pass the canal. Under typical circumstances, the canal can accommodate up to 36 ships daily. However, because of the current water limits, this number has been dramatically decreased to roughly 20 ships each day. This restriction has placed shipping businesses in a hazardous position, forcing them to navigate a series of hard options. One alternative for shipping businesses is to remain moored while waiting for a slot to become available. This strategy generally implies considerable expenses and protracted delays, often stretching for weeks, which can significantly harm profit margins. To mitigate these delays, Firms might elect to pay a hefty charge, around $4 million, to avoid the queue and accelerate their passage. While this method cuts waiting times, it represents a major cost burden that not many enterprises are able or willing to endure. Given these limits, many firms have elected to bypass the Panama Canal altogether, choosing instead to reroute their vessels over South America. This alternative, while avoiding the congestion and taxes connected with the canal, includes longer voyages through the Strait of Magellan or around Cape Horn. These routes can extend journey durations by many days or even weeks, leading to increased shipping costs and logistical issues. The crisis at the Panama Canal follows on the heels of recent security concerns in the Red Sea, a major commerce route. Attacks on ships in this region have already forced many enterprises to avoid the Suez Canal, 
adding to the pressure on global shipping networks. The cumulative impact of these disruptions is worsening delays and breakdowns in the global supply chain, potentially triggering price hikes and making it more difficult for governments to manage inflation. Safety issues have increased due to the increased congestion in the Panama Canal. Ships are often compelled to anchor for prolonged periods, sometimes extending to several days, due to the drastically limited number of available berths. Accidents and collisions are more likely along the canal's Pacific and Atlantic entrances due to the increased vessel density. Numerous vessels near one another under such crowded conditions greatly increase the likelihood of catastrophic occurrences, hence posing substantial threats to maritime safety. Many suggestions have been made to address the persistent water deficit. Incorporating seawater into Gatun Lake, the main freshwater reservoir for the canal, is one possibility. Unfortunately, the negative effects this strategy would have on Panama's drinking water supply make it unfeasible. The nation depends heavily on Gatun Lake for its supply of drinkable water, so adding salt to the lake would seriously jeopardize water security and have negative consequences for the populace. Rerouting rivers is another idea put up to increase the water supply to the canal. This approach has significant negative social and environmental effects even though it might help with water scarcity. Changing the course of river flows can damage native plant and animal life, as well as upend existing ecosystems. The indigenous tribes that depend on these waterways for their traditional customs and means of subsistence could also be negatively impacted by these changes. The potential negative effects of these changes on the environment and society may offset the advantages of having more water available for the canal. Available. Resolving the current water limitations in the Panama Canal might not be enough to address the more significant problems at hand. According to experts, a more comprehensive strategy that concentrates on the crisis's underlying roots is necessary. For long-term sustainability to be ensured, the Amazon rainforest must be preserved, and climate change must be effectively managed. Wide-ranging effects result from the continued devastation of the Amazon, which not only affects local and regional rainfall patterns, but also fuels climate instability on a global scale. Environmental problems are made worse by this destabilization, notably the Panama Canal's problems with water scarcity. The Amazon rainforest considerably helps to control systems of regional and global temperature. Its destruction throws off the delicate balance of rainfall patterns and accentuates the more general problem of climate change. These fundamental reasons have to be taken care of if we are to minimize the consequences on vital infrastructure like the Panama Canal. Should the basic issues of climate change and deforestation remain unresolved, the difficulties confronting the canal and other essential infrastructure will most likely persist and get more severe, having a significant impact on world trade and financial stability. An increasing body of scientific research is connecting the deforestation of the Amazon to the larger problem of climate change which exacerbates problems related to water scarcity, such as those that are presently affecting the Panama Canal. Despite these conclusions, a few countries in South America that border the Amazon are starting to take action to stop deforestation. To handle the issue more successfully, these nations could benefit from exchanging good deforestation techniques and policies. There's also a request for the U.S. to take a more active role in stopping deforestation in the Amazon. The U.S. has a stake in maintaining the Panama Canal's seamless functioning because of its importance to international trade and its influence on the U.S. economy. The U.S. could lessen the negative consequences of climate change and increase the canal's long-term viability by taking a proactive approach and supporting anti-deforestation initiatives. The government of Panama has a challenging job in trying to reconcile the needs of the people with the operational requirements of the canal as over half of the population depends on the same water sources supporting the canal. The governing board of the canal has suggested building a new reservoir along the India River as a solution to this problem. This reservoir is meant to boost canal traffic, which is a vital economic asset for Panama and accounts for more than 6% of the country's GDP, as well as the water supply. The plan states that the larger reservoir might be able to hold 12 to 15 ships each day which would relieve some of the current congestion. The reservoir project is not without its difficulties though. The development project is expected to cost around $900 million, which represents a substantial financial commitment for Panama. Moreover, there is little certainty on the completion schedule. Financial disagreements and delays plagued a recent canal lock extension project, suggesting that the reservoir may face the same problems. 
the plan is accompanied by environmental issues as well. The building may affect the nearby ecosystems, which include the flora and fauna, river flow patterns, and water quality. There are moral concerns regarding the project's potential to force the purchase of protected territory, and the potential uprooting of neighboring villages due to the potential negative social and economic effects on these populations. Careful thought must be given to weighing the reservoir's advantages against any potential social and environmental drawbacks. Ensuring that any development respects ecological and societal concerns while satisfying the demands of the economy is a challenge. The stability of the Panama Canal is crucial to international trade and military operations, yet its future is perilously close to being compromised. The canal's remarkable $4.32 billion in income in 2022 demonstrated its vital importance in Panama's economy. The canal's economic importance was highlighted by the fact that its revenue accounted for nearly 65% of the country's GDP. Panama is one of the richest and most industrialized nations in Latin America, largely due to its control over this vital sea route. Without the canal, there would be dire consequences for both Panama and the larger globalized economy, as well as for U.S. geopolitical interests. The canal's future is uncertain due to its recent deterioration, which started in 2023 and will continue into 2024. Investments in infrastructure, technology, and human capital will be necessary. Furthermore, it will call for a dedication to global solidarity and cooperation because no one nation can effectively address the problems we confront on its own. For more than a century, the Panama Canal has represented development and interconnectedness. It has made it easier to transfer people, products, and ideas around, which has advanced global culture and helped innumerable countries thrive economically. We must keep in mind the lessons learned from its past, as well as the collaborative and innovative spirit that made the Panama Canal possible as we face the difficulties posed by it. Together, we can make sure that the canal remains an essential component of the world's supply system and a ray of hope for the next generations. Although the road ahead is full of obstacles, there are also plenty of chances. Our ability to come together as a team and rise to the moment will be put to the test by the Panama Canal crisis. It is a chance to create a more robust, egalitarian, and sustainable global economy that will be better able to weather future shocks and bring wealth to all. We can overcome the obstacles presented by the Panama Canal problem and steer clear of it in the direction of a more promising future for international trade and the globe at large by embracing innovation, cooperation, and a common dedication to the common good. If you liked the video, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe. You can also click the next video that appears on your screen to watch it. We'd want to know how long till the next eruption.